Hey, uh, talky internet thingy. Yeah, could you uh, find me a voiceover podcast that has more than one person on it? It's not boring and, you know, it's, it's, you know. There's a lot of VO podcasts out there sharing a lot of insight and knowledge. But on another VO podcast, you get to hear from three guys who are accountability partners and who all have a different story of how their VO careers came together. Do they have all the answers? Probably not. But between the three of them, they've made all the mistakes you don't want to make. And hey, they're really nice guys. Well, pretty much. Here's Jake, Alden, and Troy with another VO Podcast. What is up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in again to another VO Podcast. I'm Jake Sanders, and I'm here with Alden and Troy as per usual. But today hey. we've got another guest uh, from the voiceover world, one of our peers, so to speak. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting her at One Voice Dallas, and she was awesome. I met her in a uh, kind of impromptu uh, improv class that was run by Scott Parkin, and I got to see her in action, and she did not disappoint. Uh, today's guest is Jen Henry, and she is, like us, a voice actor. Uh, she has done uh, some commercials uh, for like Amazon and Virgin Mobile. Uh, she's done some e-learning stuff that looks like uh, for... Um, uh, oops, sorry, I had it here and then it rolled away. But she's done good e-learning uh, stuff as well. She's done a lot of stuff. You should check out her. She website. does the thing. She she does the thing. That's she does the thing that we all do. She does the thing. Yeah, right. yeah. She just does the thing that we all do, and she deserves a much better intro than that. But yes, Jen Henry is our guest today. Jen, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. I'm doing great, and I really appreciate you guys inviting me. This is fun, and you were a fantastic in Dallas, and I love the whole kismet thing i mean we we were we were just talking about me being like a golden retriever with a tennis ball and you know walking into a room and being more comfortable and it, you know you certainly are living proof of that of of my having accosted you um it's, <laughs> it, but it was 100 like, welcome i loved it, it was like hi we're friends now Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually told this story on the podcast like a week or two after we got I got back from the or I say I got back. I'm I only live like an hour away from Dallas. But like it was <laughs> whenever we recorded one of the episodes afterwards is like the next morning because I, I showed up on sat on um Friday and then the next morning on Saturday I got there early to get my coffee because I was volunteering and um I got my coffee and walked out into the little restaurant there at the hotel and I look over and I see you sitting there with uh, a bald man and this uh, blonde lady and then Chad, who was also a volunteer. And I was like, oh, I'll go say hi to them and and then have, you know, just see what how their mornings are going. And then that bald man turned out to be Mark Ryder and then Laura Driver sitting there as well. So, I mean, I got to sit and then you were like, hey, sit down. So I was like, OK, I've never I'd never met Laura right or uh, Mark yet. So it was great to just kind of sit down and and talk with you well, guys how'd that and go for you it went great i mean like it's like it, it, uh, it was what it was i mean like there was just like she yeah. said like she just she barely knew me outside of that improv class we have and that was a great <clears> situation <throat> to be in of course but then she's like just sit down and have breakfast and you know sit while we're sitting here eating breakfast and just shoot yeah, the mark, shit, you mark know didn't I mean? scare you at all did he no he's a great guy no, he's no, a great guy i, I love his time. persona i've coached with him for probably a year and a half yeah and well, that's we both, what, that, you know we got horses and you know we, we got all that going in common and i I know that guy on a different level than what so many people hear of him. He is such a good person. He really yeah, he's is. incredible. But I, his aura that comes across, you know, and I love the way he sounds. And he's, I'm not going to compare him to this marketing guy that I see sometimes that I don't really have. <laughs> enough, you know, but he does. He has that get after it thing. And I love yeah. that about him. Well, that's the life. same thing about Jen. She's just so welcoming and so like, and like we talk about a lot that the voiceover community is full of great people. And Jen is absolutely one of those people. And she was just so welcoming to me and it made me feel really good and comfortable to sit down with, you know, some of the, these heavy hitters and just talk about whatever at breakfast, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And she's one of those people, uh, comparing back to Mark, she's not afraid to be herself. And that's what makes you great in this oh, industry. Big time. It really that does. has everything to and that, oh, that's so you got, now I have to live up to the hype. Oh, yeah, start being yourself, Jim. <laughs> it won't be that hard now. Come on, it won't be that hard. No, it's it, my and bless her heart, my mother in law is calling me. Um, so, uh, 
I'm going to try to discreetly send a quick text message and hold my train of thought. The <laughs> it, it's funny people refer to the the heavy hitters, um, and the thing is is that uh, everybody is people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's not being a, afraid to to walk up to what you perceive and it is all perception right uh, most especially in the the vo world i mean it, if you walk into a restaurant in la and see Lori allen or you know rob paulson or or yeah. maurice lamar you know somebody who is you know, in a different space mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. i i wouldn't suggest going up and sitting in their lap um however if we're all at a conference together Come sit in somebody's lap. That's a great freaking introduction right there. Hi, I'm Jake. <laughs> Are you going to eat that bacon? You know, th- I do like bacon. You know, why? <laughs> why not? Uh-huh. I mean, we we spend so much of our lives and our existences. And understand, I did not come into the VO world with this understanding of myself and of course the industry or, or anything else. And I think a lot of what I talk about or blabber on about or whatever that, you know, it depends on how you categorize my BS um, came largely from my growth as a human inside of this industry. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. And so the industry has it, itself and the people in it have unlocked my ability to just be who I am. And mm-hmm. it sort of came down to a brass tax at one point where I had to understand what constitutes me and get all of the crap or as much as I could out of the way of me and mm-hmm. whatever it is I'm doing. And that sort of evolved to a point of I can't be anything else anymore right so it's gonna work or it's not gonna work but at i'm i'm 53 next month and so for the sake of my own sanity and whatever's next and my kids it was just mandatory to get away from as much of my own baggage and reclaim as much of it as I could. Mm -hmm. Otherwise just nothing else had the possibility of working. Right. And so, yeah, just come sit down. Are you going to eat that bacon? Are you good? You know, (laughs) and, and just do that. Don't ever, don't ever be concerned in an event space to go up and talk to a Dave Fenoy or a Tara Strong or Rob Paulson or because if if they're out there, they're out there. People are receptive to everybody else. And that is honestly just the, the wings that I was pulled under when I came into the industry. Apparently, I looked like I was going to crash and freaking burn if, if, the, if certain people didn't go, oh, no, no, no. Come here, baby. Come here, honey. Y- y'all, y'all are in the, you know, oh, bless her heart. No, come, come here. C- come here. Okay. Yeah. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, no, don't, no, you're not going to do. Okay. Yeah. You're good. And that is, it, it was a long time before I realized that there was ugliness in the industry mm-hmm. because I was nested. And then, and then they kicked me out of it. And they're like, oh, okay. But I had the tools. Sure. Right. I had the, re- I had the right. readiness. Right. Yeah, I think some of us sometimes when we use those terms of you hear people say heavy hitters or elites or whatever, I think mm-hmm. a lot of that is saying the people that have the experience of the business. Sure. Yeah. And it's not, oh, yeah. it's not always looking at them and saying, oh, they're on a pedestal and we can't touch them. Right. Because if you go to VO Atlanta or you go to One Voice, you'll learn very quickly. You know, I, I had – the shock of I'm sitting there eating by myself at, at VO Atlanta and Dave Fenoy sat down at my table. There was no, you know, not a lot of empty tables. Hey, mind if I sit here? No. And, you know, we're having a conversation like we've known each other forever. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, it. that was a couple of years ago. <clears throat> and those, those things, you know, uh, everyone is, like you said, they're all approachable. 
And the funny thing is you start to get on the other side of that and people start coming up to you. It's a totally different feeling. And then you even better understand it. Yeah. You know, that it's just um, uh, the people that are in it. And yes, there's bad apples. But my gosh, the majority are such good people and everybody willing to help. Um, We were talking before we we jumped on about marketing and, you know, about (laughs) seeing people face to face and all that. And I want to flip back to that before we forget, because there's such a commonality among all of us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. With this. Mm -hmm. And something something you said, Jen, about it's easier to go sit in somebody's lap and talk about bacon than send that one email. Oh, yeah. How does does all – I mean – do you go about that your is the marketing weirdest that way sentence. also? That is the weirdest sentence that is completely accurate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's easier to talk about. Since I would, it about is bacon. easier for me to walk up and sit in somebody's lap and ask if they're going to eat their bacon than it is for me to send a cold email to a production house. Mm-hmm. I am more comfortable with one scenario than I am the other. Mm-hmm. And for, I think, the overwhelming majority, one would be just absolutely unthinkable um for me it's the it's the emails that are so hard and i don't know how or i don't know what the mechanism is that Mm -hmm. controls that i kind of i kind of do at the same time my understanding makes no sense whatsoever (laughs) even having had it explained to me you know by somebody grabbing me by the proverbial ears and saying they might be looking for you right <laughs> you know mm-hmm. right right you never know until you send it right yeah. but, but I, I agree because for me even if i come up with i go to a class and i learn what that email needs to look like it yeah. still doesn't look right to me no uh-uh. because no matter because no matter how many i send i'm also getting those Every day, there's somebody wanting to work on my SEO or help me with Facebook marketing. Right. And every one of those I read, I'm instantly turned off. That part. Instantly. That part. Yeah. So yeah. that part scares me. I don't want to run people away. But on the other hand, if they don't know who I am, how am I going to get run away? You know, exactly. so it's that goes on with all of us. I think every day of the week, you know, that's a big struggle. And I think that's my that my fear is being the email that is received the way I receive the yes the, the 30 mm-hmm. that hit my email box exactly the same way. And they exactly. are all, you know, how do I make my introduction mm-hmm. such mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. It, it isn't received with an eye roll mm-hmm. and right, oh, right, another yeah. freaking yeah. one of the, you know. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to be that. If we could only imagine in our minds, the way we imagine our audience or whoever we're talking to when we're creating our voiceover, when we're narrating whatever script we have, that person we're talking to in our mind. If we had a person that we could picture when we're creating our email, that we we can imagine what their feedback is going to be in a positive way instead of always dreading, oh, I sound so stupid when I'm <laughs> typing this. Yeah. Well, I'm a dork. Hard. Well, I know I'm a dork. So, so, <laughs> I think so a lot of us know the secret. We're all dorks. <laughs> you know, so, so do, and a lot of, I, and I think a lot of the people that we're sending these emails to and we're sending to production houses and stuff anyway, are just as much a dork as we are. Well, right. you know, why wouldn't they be? We're, when we are creative people sending things to creative people, I do know for a fact, one of my, one of my biggest dumb things or just <laughs> not, not so, not, it, it didn't go well, was being too formal. Yeah. When, when I came into the industry initially, I was like, oh, okay, professional means this. Mm-hmm. And I've worked in, you know, so I know what a professional email looks like. And then sort of coming to the point of understanding each profession has a different language. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I would, love again to find that mechanism that just flips the lock that says okay here are your resources and i'm, I'm actually trying to do that right now in the wake of uh the <clears throat> nevo conference mm-hmm. um reaching out to people just to say thanks you know and it's becoming easier and i'm asking myself why i f- thought this was such a problem 
And then I go over and I look at the voiceover resource and I, you know, I look at it like, Oh, nope. Back in box, back in box, back in box. <laughs> and, and it's just, it, it's intimidating to me, mm-hmm. but understanding mm-hmm, yeah. that every industry has its own language and why you don't necessarily mm-hmm. want to kick open a door. I don't think, you know, and I, you know, you know, I'm not the marketing person. I would have a trouble. I would have a trouble. I would have a problem kicking open somebody's email door, so to speak, and just going, you're going to eat that bacon. At the same time, <laughs> being over formal is right. also a turnoff because I believe right. yeah. it, it sort of it's illuminates insecurity because it's not yeah. real. Yeah. yeah. It feels and, scripted, yeah. copy paste. Yeah. yeah. And all I, I like what Cliff, wants is I like what Cliff Zellman says about that because he's on the other end. He gets a lot of submissions mm-hmm. and he said, I don't need to know anything about you, nothing. I just need to hear you. And once yeah. I hear you, if I'm interested, I'll reach out. And that's probably the mentality of 90% of those people on the other side. They're like, all right, the demo's right there. Let me click on it and listen mm-hmm. for eight seconds. Oh, not bad. Okay. Right. Well, maybe I'll reply or maybe I'll put you over here in my folder for later. Right. And, you know, so sometimes I think there's so much overkill and, you know, it has to be such a perfect email because I got to wonder if 80% of them probably don't read it. They just look for the, click the attachment or right. click, the, click, the, right. the, the, I click the attachment. So maybe we're worrying too much. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I don't know. What? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I, maybe that's the case, Jen. And I don't, if you're hearing this for the first time, I apologize, but yeah. epiphany I, moment. Are you yeah. kidding me? I yeah. think we're putting a little much into this market. Yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's not beyond the realm of possibility that a bunch of creative people are entirely neurotic and and uh, overthink things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeez. And speaking yeah. speaking of speaking, don't let of, that get out. Uh, <laughs> speaking of creatives and all that, now all of us came from different backgrounds. This has not been our our thing for centuries. You know, it's right. only been for so many years. What in your career? What in your past? do you think gave you the tools to do what you're doing now? I have a radio background, which to some degree can be the kiss of death for people. What it did provide me overwhelmingly was an advantage because I can produce the hell out of anything. So I knew coming in how to produce my own stuff, how to edit my own stuff, how to, make audio sound really good. Mm -hmm. So, because you can have some, it's hard to overlook substandard audio. And I didn't realize, obviously, the advantage that that may have been. And I think that's something that a lot of people do take for granted when they come from backgrounds that don't involve anything in terms of what what we do um they they take that for granted and just being able to produce my own stuff Mm -hmm. i think was an overwhelming advantage understanding how uh, understanding how sound works yeah have a a good ear yeah yeah and being able to treat my own space you know i didn't fall Mm -hmm. I didn't fall of it. Now I probably have overkill in my quite literal padded cell. Um, <laughs> a lot of people don't realize national work, continuity work, promo work, um, national nightly shows, daily shows are sometimes cut from pillow forts in hotel rooms. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, uh, I've, and I've seen the conversation come up. There, there are different schools of thought about what you need to know and what you need to have coming in to start, to do auditions, to do anything. And there are people under the impression that I need to study for a year. I need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment and building out a, a professional studio and um, you know do all of these things before I pop my mic and start auditioning on P2Ps or, or contractor sites. And that I feel is, it can be an incredible disservice to people 
because what I'm finding is they are not getting the information that this is freaking hard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that, oh, by the way, you might do a hundred auditions inside of your fully built out studio with your thousand dollar microphone before you book a thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So they get to audition 101 having invested 5,000 or more dollars into their career with no practical knowledge Mm -hmm. of the challenges that come along with it. And further, a, a further detriment to them can be, oh my God, I've done all these things. I have to validate that. I have to get my money back. I have to. So they then bring that into the studio, into the microphone with them. And that's the kiss of freaking death. You, you have to, it's imperative to claim that space in front of your microphone for yourself and whatever moment you need to be in for what's sitting in front of you. Right. Because desperation is audible. And I didn't realize that for a yep. long time either. That's great advice. You yep. can hear that. Yep. You can hear somebody overthinking. You can hear when a talent is trying to right. make it right. Absolutely. So the the concept that I have to do it right is always going to be detrimental because number one, there's never a right. Right. Or I mean, correct. Yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> they don't know until they hear it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what they hear is going to be what they feel. Right. Correct. On point. And it's so hard to believe for so many of us at various points in our our journey, our career, our path, whatever cliche you want to put on it, no matter what we do for a living, I think. Right. That Mm -hmm. guess what? You've got what you need. And that is, in fact, what people want. But that's like the hardest thing to realize. Yeah. It, it is. I mean, yeah, I'm, I, 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 I'll i speak. I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I struggle with that, too. I mean, like, yeah. I struggle, like, accepting, sure. like, me being just me. Because it's like, I can't be me because that's not right, so to speak. That's, a, you know that's I mean? not enough. Yeah. That's not that's, enough, right? Yeah. That, it's not enough for me just to be able to walk up to somebody else's words or a character that somebody else has fleshed out. Take a moment, take it in, and interpret it through all of whatever Mm -hmm. makes me the person that's standing right here, Mm -hmm. and then me do it. Yeah. That can't can't possibly be right, right? preposterous. Yeah. But somehow it is, and that's still like the hardest thing to grasp. That is one of the hardest things to grasp. It is. And it and is. that kind of ties back to like something you said when we first started the podcast, how like it took you being in the industry and like talking to people and like basically the industry kind of shaped you into realizing like, mm-hmm. I just need to be me, right? It kicked my ass into realizing that. Yeah. Because there there were parallel things in my life and people in the industry are very perceptive. They say th- they see things that we don't believe we put forward. Why? Because they have to. We have to. Because if we're not observers, how can we effectively interpret something to put it out there with some level of authenticity effectively? Yeah. yeah. So in that, I believe the people who are most or who are able to do that most effectively are those who are more observant to individual human condition, seeing past whatever somebody puts out there to to who they actually are. And Mm -hmm. maybe someday that person finds who others see. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they don't. It depends. Um, But having the benefit of people around me who saw significantly more and and significantly different elements of me Mm -hmm. that I didn't recognize. And they hung in there with me until the day I saw it and went, oh, okay, this thing. 
Do that. Do that. <laughs> and that thing ain't pretty. It's messy. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's not wearing matching socks. <laughs> and, and, and that's fine because there's a lot of mismatched sock in the world. Right. And right. what makes me batshit makes me successful. Yeah. Good point. Good point. But you could, and it, but it's, it's because you own it though. Like, you know, it's yeah. because you, and you, you accept it, you yeah, embrace it and you use it the way it should be used. Yeah. And I, I think can't hide from it. You can't hide from it. Right. If you, if, if you stop hiding from it, that's, that's kind of like what initiates this stuff, you know, like for your, for oneself kind of thing, you know? It, it is. And it, as weird as it sounds, as weird as it sounds, it's, it, it, and it's not, it's not necessarily an easy place to get to. Mm-hmm. Because you got to pull things out of boxes and, you know, before you can throw them away and go, I wore that. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, we're, and we're talking about moments in time <clears throat> that, you know, whether you're pulling something out of the back of your physical closet or out of the back of your internal closet and, and being able to say, wow, that was a really bad choice. And mm -hmm. I made it. And right. these were the, the consequences, positive or negative. Mm -hmm. And you sort of face and move past whatever horrible feelings may go along with it. Whether it's, you know, those feelings of guilt or shame or whatever. Like, shit, I did that. Okay, yeah, this happened. And it's mine. And I did that. Or I was responsible for that. And... Now I can be accountable for that. And being accountable is one of the most liberating experiences mm -hmm. I think anybody can have. And that's very different from blaming yourself for things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just like, wow, I jacked that up. Is there a way I can help fix it? Nope. Okay. It, that you go right yeah. yeah on to the next you one. move forward yeah yep. you, you 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 have to um yep. and feeling guilty that just weighs you down um guilt's a funny thing and i think a lot of us are burdened by guilt and a lot of those feelings and that has a lot to do with what keeps us from where we need to be well, I feel guilty because maybe I should be spending this time or this money or this effort mm -hmm. or this whatever, or I shouldn't leave home and do this thing, or I shouldn't take extra long time in the shower for a moment of, <laughs> you know, that to, to win that hypothetical argument in my head. <laughs> because I'm, I mean, I'm, I know I'm the only one that has hypothetical arguments and debates in the shower <laughs> um, <laughs> that I win every single time. It's a great oh place for resolution. It is. That, and, that and the long ride in the car. Long ride in the car. <laughs> yeah. man. Oh my gosh. Yard work. The stuff yard oh, yeah. I get done. I'm a freaking prophet when I'm pulling <laughs> weeds. <laughs> when I'm yeah. pulling weeds. <laughs> yeah. I've won so many Pulitzers. And <laughs> they... Uh, and... And, and just, just the, the understanding, you know, we feel guilty about all these things. And then guess what I realized guilt was? Guilt is just a way to make ourselves feel better about the dumb shit that we do. Mm -hmm. Because if we feel mm -hmm. bad about something, then we're still a good person. Because yeah. we feel like we kind of like, oh, I feel bad. I, 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 I feel bad. Deserve. I feel yeah. bad. So, yeah, so you know, it's, it's okay it's, now. It's, yeah, it's, it's our own self-check. <clears> and as long as we continue to feel yeah. bad about that thing it allows us to in some insipid way make us feel better about ourselves because mm -hmm. if we don't feel bad about it then we're a bad person mm -hmm. um and it's just the weirdest construct it can if be you feel bad about something <laughs> yeah. and you messed up then try to give remedy to that and if you can't then you have to contend with whatever those consequences are and then move forward. Move on. And move That's on. Right. Got to. Because <clears throat> you're not helping anybody. Right, right. No, Nobody yeah. feels yeah. better because you feel guilty. Nope. 
Well, and you and 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 sometimes you can replace. Yeah, what I know you it's should. weird, right, Jay? Yeah, yeah. Like sometimes you, know. you can replace what you should be doing in assessing your work accurately, so you can mm-hmm. make those micro improvements along the way and get better each day. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just settle for the guilt. Well, I didn't do what it took yesterday, or I didn't do, you know. And instead of making those improvements every day, you let the guilt convince you that you're doing something that you're not doing. And that's just a cop out, really. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. I agree. And, and that's, I, I tell, I tell people that another staggering discovery was that, um, at least for me, was that apologism is actually arrogant. And I didn't realize it until I was on the other side of it. One mm-hmm. day, somebody said, "I am so sorry for taking up so much of your time." Something I'm sure I've said thousands of times. Mm -hmm. And my knee jerk was reaction to this person was, you're not the boss of me. (laughs) You didn't take up any of my time. You don't have that level of influence, power or control in my life to take time from me. Yeah, you gave it up. You gave the gave, I. I'm more than happy to be here or I wouldn't freaking be here. Right. right. And if I'm not right. more than happy to be here, then that's on me. I need to be able to say something and change the circumstances. If I don't have the time to give or I choose something other, then I'm beholden to, to take that initiative. I can't feel bad because I have another priority or another issue or another something. Mm -hmm. And that time has, is allocated there to tell an individual, Hey, you know what? This has been awesome. I really appreciate that you've given me your time to, to do this thing. I need to have, have a thing or whatever the case may be. Can we touch back? Mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm. or however we navigate that, mm-hmm. you know, but at no point in time should I feel like I am in control of somebody else's time. That's mm-hmm. not right. my place. Right. Good I point. That. Mm-hmm. Good so point. instead of <clears throat> saying, I'm sorry, I started switching it to thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank mm-hmm. you for the time that you've given me. Wow, that's really very like, good, very that's... insightful, and I just I feel like our conversation today has been such a deep dive into just people what what people deal with every day and and how it affects yeah. and how it affects our performance, how it affects our mindset going into the booth and whatnot. Like honestly, a little unexpected. Not that I didn't think any of us were capable of going there. I was just surprised that that's where it went, and I've really enjoyed just listening to your perspective on that and 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 some things that you've said have definitely clicked with me today. So that's a really yeah. I'm really glad that. Uh, we we, we, the, the conversation went this way because I think that's yeah, I something feel, we have not really kind of gotten into on the podcast. I feel a new podcast coming. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, like. <laughs> VO self awareness with Jen Henry. Right, I know. Like, just do it. <laughs> well, and we used to call deep, these soft skills, points. right? We used to call these the the deep interacting points. with people in a, in a way that's effectual and building. We used to call those soft skills. We don't use that term as much anymore, but. A lot of voiceover talent struggle with soft skills in that way, you know, and yeah, I think it has a yeah. lot to do with the interpersonal talk that you were uh, mentioning, Jen. And that's, that's what it is. You know, I've seen it just, you know, hashtag narrator, um, you know, <laughs> soft, soft skills, building things and um, things like being on time, things like not saying, Jesus, what do you want when somebody calls? <laughs> um, <coughs> these are great soft mm-hmm. skills. Um, to be acquired in a work situation, I find that because what so much of what we do in a way is, you know, to me, is maybe just sort of in the process of living that we bring mm-hmm. into spaces. And more than just a soft skill to learn in a workplace, it all just stems from where we came from and what we learn and what we feel about ourselves and what we've sort of, how we fit into the constructs that have been built around us, either by society or previous work place experiences, mm. uh, 
all the way back to family upbringing and what we were exposed to and so many different facets, which as performers are highly beneficial mm-hmm. to us when we allow ourselves to to actually look at them and accept them and embrace them as positives because as compartmentalized as we like to be, these are all things that make up who we are. And you can use right. them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, have to. we have to. Um, to kind of switch gears just a little bit, like I had mentioned, I, you know, I met you in Scott's improv class that he did, you know, just kind of spur of the moment there at one voice. Um, how important, and we've talked about it one on one time Ed, that I can remember on the podcast, like how important do you think it is that everyone kind of, and I do mean everyone, not necessarily voiceover, but I mean, improv is such a powerful tool. Mm-hmm. And not just voiceover, not just acting, but like in people's day to day lives, I've taken improv classes here and there. And, you know, a lot every time they'll say this is for everyone. This is not for a perform. This is not just per- for performers. No, I mean, it helps no, people like with their interactions, you know, at work with interactions, you know, when they're out and about kind of thing. Like, I, you know, I read on your website that, you know, you 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 have imp- improv experience and whatnot. And of course you do. I mean, I know this about you, of course. So I just wanted to like get your thoughts on improv in, in life and, and how people can, what people can discover about themselves through improv and what that does for people like you or what it can do for people. I believe improv at its core is beneficial to anybody who talks to other people ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be true. Because the key to effective communication isn't talking it's listening Mm -hmm. and being fully aware of your counterparts because effective improv can only come from listening not from talking Mm -hmm. and That's even just a scene that you improv by yourself in a room alone. Because at some point in time or another, you have to have listened, observed the world around you to let in these things that you're drawing on to to fire in your head when you're in an improvisational scene. You know, now I'm in a coffee house. That's great. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Castanets. Okay. And we're back. So the ability to listen in any circumstance is always greater than the ability to speak because communication doesn't necessarily come from language itself. Proof, go someplace where there is an international community or a diverse community in any way, shape or form. Watch two people having a conversation in a language you don't speak. And if you listen to the prosody, you watch their gestures, their expressions. You can get the gist of that conversation. Even if you don't understand a single word. When we talk about, I talk to people, a great study in acting and getting the understanding that language itself is probably the smallest part of communication. Watch something in a language, watch a TV show in a language you don't speak without the subtitles and see if you can follow it. And moreover, how long it takes you to follow it. Because if you watch and you listen and you observe, you can interact with what's going on that you're seeing on the screen, even if you don't understand a single word of it, it's a different processing point. And we can have such an incredible understanding of one another by observing and listening. Unfortunately, the general communication structure is backwards because we listen long enough to come up with what we're going to say next. So we're not listening to take in. We're not listening to receive. We're listening to respond. And that bunges up a lot of communication. 
when you walk into an improv situation, honestly, a conversation with a stranger, that's an improv situation. 100% improvisational situation. Yeah. The scene has been set for you. Maybe it's not a silly scene, but the pretense doesn't change. Nothing changes about the fact that you are performing improv when you walk up and meet somebody that you have never met before. You walk into a space where you've never been before. You are in an improvisational situation. Yeah. That's so, that's yeah. very true. Yeah. And then and and the whole listening, you know, watching a conversation in a language you don't understand, that's it's very true. I mean, I've been at many restaurants where I've seen that go down. And I do kind of get captivated for a moment if I am watching long enough, like, what's going on here, right? Like, oh, wow. And, I'm, and, it's, not, and it's not what they're saying because I don't understand. It's the gestures. It's the tonality. It's the facial expressions. It's things you can watch and observe. And I mm-hmm. think you made a really good point about <clears throat> observation and how we should listen more. Because I think that's a big issue that we all can struggle with is listening. Because mm-hmm. we all have our own agendas. Mm-hmm. We all have. Mm, sure, sure. And an agenda can just simply be interchanged with the word need. You know, if an agenda is something that we think about in, in terms of a plan, okay, but really our, our agenda comes from what we need or a perceived need. And I have found sort of in life, if we sit and we listen and we observe, we might find that our need and our agenda is already being met. But if we don't see that it's being met, then we're going to act out in a particular way. And I'm a huge fan of Maslow, so I won't dork out and go Maslow, but we, we have we have needs that need to be met just as animals. Mm-hmm. We have mm-hmm. needs that that have to be met. And if we don't feel as though those needs are being met, we're going to respond to our environment, to the people in our environment in very particular ways. And we all know people who do. Mm-hmm. Will taking improv classes necessarily change everything around us? No. What it can do very much is break down barriers to how we listen and how we receive the things around us. So we're better informed when we respond Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just freaking funny. Yeah. Right. You know, right. That's a great place to lose fear Mm -hmm. and become more self. Yeah. Become more self-aware in a moment because when you do improv, (coughs) pardon me, when you do improv, if it's going to be successful, you can't stop and think about what the right thing to say is going to be. Mm-hmm. Right. Otherwise, it just throws brakes on everything. It forces you to get rid of things that stand in the way of what is actually real. And sometimes if you're in a scene that is intended to be silly, brilliance happens. Because sometimes the first thing that comes to your mind is incongruent with the scene. That makes it funnier. And if you can move forward with that without going, oh, that was dumb. I shouldn't have said that. No, then the person that you're with is beholden to work from that. And it just is such a liberating way to learn to communicate at an entirely different level. And know that you're not always going to be communicating in the same way as other people. But knowing where you are and listening to them, that will help you hear their agenda. That will help you meet their needs more efficiently. And sometimes when somebody has has their needs met efficiently, that will give them a moment of pause to go, okay, wait a minute. That need was met. I wonder if this needs being met. Oh, I want, you know, and not that you taking improv is going to change somebody else's life. Right. But when we're in the presence of people who have sort of glaring self-awareness, 
it can provide a safer place for us to develop some of those same things. I'm not afraid to dance in the grocery store. (laughs) And that started with my kids. It had nothing to do with expressing myself. It had something to do with not dying in the freaking grocery store. <laughs> and you know what? Singing in the grocery store and dancing in your with your kids in the grocery store is a hell of a lot better than chastising them for, don't touch the cucumbers. <laughs> so my youngest is autistic and it's like, dude, there is nothing that he can't have to touch. You know, especially when he was younger. But you know what? If we were dancing at the basket, That's where his focus was. Right. And I didn't mind. I didn't care who looked. Sure. And a lot of people are afraid of, oh, what will people think of me? You know what? People will think that I am not curled up in fetal position crying because I'm wearing my youngest like a hat. And my oldest is, you know, writing a thesis on something because he was born smarter than me. I didn't actually know it until he started to talk, but <laughs> so we're just, we're so afraid of what <clears throat> everybody thinks. That is so true. And I think that carries over into what we do. Everything. You know, it shows up. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. I, th- that ability to, to listen to somebody and to pull wh- what they are seeking, you know, do they need mm-hmm. to be. Are they looking to feel loved? Are they looking to feel this? Are they looking to hear that? Mm-hmm. If you stop and listen, you can determine that, and then you your answers become that. But if you are, like Jen said, if you're already prepping a reply just to look good or make you feel better, you're not helping yourself at all. Um, I see that all the time. You know, I, I've got certain family members who are, quick draw McGraw, you know, you never finish saying what you're going to say. They're already answering because they want to look smart, you know, but they don't really care what you're talking about. They just want to tromp over you. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's no fun either. Um, yeah. Wow. I feel like I've been to therapy and I owe somebody money and I need to get off the couch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I really feel like this was such like a, this is like when I, when we go back and listen to this episode, I feel like, and when others do too, I just feel like it's going to give them something that we just haven't had on the podcast yet. Like, yeah, yeah for real. We, we've not we're always, really talked we're always about voiceover, technical. but we've talked about like an essence or the, or an, the essence of authenticity in voiceover in a sense, even though we haven't just been saying, yeah. talking directly about voiceover, it's just talking about being yourself and how, how often do we hear be yourself, you know, or like, you know, be authentic. That's what they want. Like, that's what people are wanting to hear, but yet we get in the booth and we just can't provide that. You know what I mean? I say, well, we, we try we to do it. it. That's the we problem. Try to do it trying right, yeah. to be authentic. And if you'll just be freaking you. Yeah, you know? and, I, and I, you as know, if my struggle was comes something in you is, could put on, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. and the I struggle has come in lately with me as I've been coaching with with Tom Antonellis on dialect reduction, and <laughs> I told, well, I told him up front. I said, Tom, I don't, I, I want to f- to find certain words that are absolutely murdering me, but I also do not want to lose my authenticity. And that became a big challenge because it's, I don't know that you can do that totally. Can I help? Can, I, uh, hate. It's not a word I throw around a lot. I hate the expression dialect reduction. Mm-hmm. You aren't reducing <laughs> your dialect. You are adding an accent. Yes. You are adding That's true. a dialect. That's as true. As soon, if I go to Tom or anybody so I can fine tune my British accent or a, a, a regional British dialect mm-hmm. or a regional U.S. dialect. I'm not reducing a damn thing. I am adding to my tool chest Mm -hmm. an additional dialect that I can work with. Mm -hmm. As soon as you tell somebody 
that they need to reduce their natural dialect. You are telling them that where they are from, their heritage, their geography, their personal upbringing, that their everything is not enough Mm -hmm. and that it's Mm -hmm. not good enough to do what you want to achieve. And that is bullshit. I'm kind of passionate about that. Mm -hmm. I was, and I really wish people would stop using that expression because I know when people say it, they mean well, Mm -hmm. and they're just talking about the linguistically, but you know what, what we sound like right out of the box is who the, we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Very true. And to, to tell people that this isn't enough or that this is bad, or you won't ever book work as who you are is so detrimental to the performer as a human. And you know what happens? People step into the booth and they fight their natural self. Right. They fight their natural dialect rather than going, oh, this is a banking spot for Seattle. Let me pull this generic homogenized U.S. American English off the shelf. Put those shoes on this read. Mm-hmm. And then put it back when I'm done. Right. There are people who want to succeed so badly and have so much to offer as performers. Their authenticity demands it of them. And they go to a conference, they go to a something, they do a something and they, and, and are told, well, you sound too, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Stop it. I mean, that's pretty much what we do. We get in our own way and we, and like you had mentioned, you just, you got to unpack a lot of things and you just got to get out of your way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have people putting stuff in our way right? by telling us right out of the gate. And there's a good chance that we're already neurotic as shit before we even open our mouth and Mm -hmm. and display who we are and what we sound like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And then we have somebody say, you're not enough. You have to change this thing about who you are at your very core. Mm Mm-hmm. One of my first coaches um, who just, and I won't mention a name yet because I talked to him yesterday and he is retiring at the end of this year. Um, He told me when I went to the first workshop, he said, when you were introducing yourself, I was like, oh, geez, oh boy, listen to that accent. He said, and then you read for me and I said, forget all that. He's fine. Don't worry about it. And you embrace that. But as you grow your business, and I guess that was part of the thing as I got into this full time a couple of years ago, I thought, what if, and I did look at it exactly like you're saying, I said it the wrong way, but I did look at it as adapting another club in the golf bag that said, I can pull a Gen Am club for this mm-hmm. read because it's about software or the cloud or whatever. Yeah. And I know exactly which words by looking at the script where I will sound totally Gen Am, if I hit, you know, I can't say get, it's got to be get. I can't Mm -hmm. say this, it's got to be this. I don't really change a whole lot except a handful of words, and it does sound a lot different. And you're right, it's just pulling that club, pulling that character for that one read. But then I turn right around and go to other stuff. If they don't specify, they're going to get good old natural me. I get booked for that. When they yeah. sometimes say that's not they, no no regional accents, but what if what if you hear it and you like it? What if it has just enough of that that it's different, and, and it they resonates. like it? And you're right, it does. And I get booked for that all the time. Well, sometimes yeah. that's your so, second read, Troy. Is you uh, yeah you absolutely. hold back and then you just turn it loose with your southern you know yeah yeah just let the give second them the one option. Go. <laughs> let the second one go all Texas or whatever they want in there. <laughs> well, I can do that too, honey, because I'm from Central Florida. There you go. There I'm you a go. Nat- I'm an I'm a Polk County native. Um, but interestingly, I didn't grow. My sister has more of a Southern accent than I. 
I grew, the, the people who were sort of linguistically responsible for me in terms of parents and my mom and teachers, mm -hmm. they happened for the most part to not have Southern accents. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing. And I have a bit of a, a hearing impairment. That, and that's the only thing really that I can attribute mm -hmm. to my not having a, a discernible right. Southern accent right. um, it is that I learned to speak with a very homogenized mm -hmm. nor actually Northern leaning homogenized mm -hmm. dialect, despite the fact that I was in central Florida. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to see over the next I probably won't see it. I'll be dead and gone. But over the next 25, 30 years, we're, I think we're going to see a lot Troy of the has Southern, plans. <laughs> well, we're going to see a lot of the Southern diminish because there is so much influence of other areas of the country now moving here. Mm -hmm. And the and the kids in school are hearing it different. The, the Appalachia is not going to go away. The people that live in, you know, hollows mm -hmm. and caves, that's going to always be there. But in the Nashville area and those type areas, we're seeing that become less accented, you know, the larger cities in the South. Mm -hmm. And that's going to continue. So I think that's why sometimes it's now becoming a little more accepted. If it has just a touch of Southern in it, they seem to like it. It's friendly. It's down to earth. It's grounded and, and it works okay. It's, it's, it's salt of the earth stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, you know, that, that's it. People's perceptions of, regionalities and what positives those bring to the table. I think, I believe marketing is starting to realize that, and most certainly in the last few years, that everybody isn't a 30 year old white guy. Mm -hmm. That every, oh, no offense, no, no offense, Jake. Um, you know, that, that, Every, every mom doesn't sound like this. You know what? The reality is any, I, I, I don't remember the, the cleaning product, but I can remember when my kids were little and they're only 15 months apart. Um, seeing a, a thing for a cleaning product and it was a woman in clothing that I would never wear. <laughs> Most certainly was not wearing at the time with two in diapers. One who wouldn't sleep ever. Um, and it showed the baby on a white carpet. And the and the white baby on the white carpet crawled onto linoleum that had a little after effects sparkle on it and i'm like i hate you and everything about you and i want you to go away <laughs> where do you live right right what freaking fantasy did you roll out of i'm sitting there you know i i'm waking up covered in vomit underneath the guy i don't know that well and that used to have a really different story right you know, it's just because I fell asleep after my, you know, my kid puked on me in the middle of the night. And <laughs> it's the reality of sounding like a tired mom mm -hmm. or snark is coming into the picture mm -hmm. because what's the opposite of BS? Snark. You know, right. you know, we're not kidding because we're brave enough to have we're, we're brave enough to give this woman money. To sound like she did when we talked to her on the phone, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So the, the natural, the natural thing is in, and I, and I love that I, you, I saw that you booked something recently too, with sounding like you. Troy. Yeah. Well, Troy's always yeah. booking that his natural sound. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. Because it's real. Yeah. It's real. Yep. Real is what matters. Yeah. Well, my wife, my wife would like that to double. So. <laughs> <laughs> the bookings, yeah, 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 yeah you know, no we all would. it all comes with time, and yeah. <clears throat> well, Jen, yeah. honestly, like I, it, it's, it's, uh, I, we mean this when we say this. We could keep going 
for hours, I'm sure. It's just so fun to talk to you and just hear your pers- your perspective on things and just in general, like you're so you and I love that. And um, you're, you're such a great person to meet in person. I hope, um, I know Troy's going to be at VO Atlanta if you're going to be there. So if you guys see each other, you should definitely uh, say hello. I will. And- It'll be a, a flying hug for sure. You have been more. I can't believe that we've been, that you guys pulled my string and, and I just sat here and talked for an hour. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's, kinda, that, that's what we want. I mean, like th- th- we don't have guests on super often, maybe once a month and we might have some more to end the year, but it's a lot of the times it's just us. And, you know, sometimes at least for me, I feel like we can only say so much. So it's always refreshing to have s- someone new yeah. come on and, and we're and just talk. scratching the surface. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're just scratching the surface. And, and, and if this is any indication of, of what we're going to hear with more people on, then I'm super excited. Be- and, and I can't wait for people to listen to this episode just because it is something so there's something therapeutic about it. And I, uh, I can't yeah. wait. We should I get hope, 250 hope, an hour for it at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. That's right. <laughs> I hope someone else hears this and it resonates with them. Like it's resonated with me. And I hope I'm able to kind of like absorb everything we've talked about today and, and, and maybe start applying it to my own mentality and, and, um, uh, life and whatnot. But, uh, Jim, before we go, is there, is there anything you want to promote? Is there, where can people find you if they wanted to look you up and, or whatever, what, what are, what's something that you'd like to share with people out there? Um, I didn't think about that. I actually didn't think about anything before. I'm just like, oh, cool. <laughs> Troy invited me to come hang out with you guys. Uh, let's. <laughs> and like, I didn't prepare anything. Um, you can find. I'm, I'm very, very happy to be doing a handful of things. Um, it's really cool that some of it's under NDA because that's always fun to say. Well, I'm of doing course. things, but I, but I can't talk about it because it's under NDA. Doctor. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You know, when it comes out, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, I was I I did just launch. A, I didn't launch. I showed up for the session. The, the other people did the heavy lifting. Uh, Wealth Simple National campaign that just launched in Canada. Okay. Um. So, thank you for the for the graces of that. And I just doing the damn thing, man. You yeah. can um, always find me online. I'm, uh, you know, troll me on Facebook is cool. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. It's really bad. We talked about that stuff, guys. I'm not yeah. very good at that. Uh, but my website is jenhenrycreatives.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can reach me through that. It'd be great to get something other than Russian spam bots. Um, through my website yeah. <laughs> um, or Jen, Jen at jenhenrycreatives.com. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for being on here with us. I'm super excited. Thank you, I, guys. I, I will definitely plan to have you back and just d- talk some more. Um, guys, thanks again from me, uh, Alden and Troy. This has been another VO podcast. If uh, you want to write into us, which we hope you do, uh, it's yeah. another VO podcast at gmail.com. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram at another VO podcast. Uh, thanks again, guys. And Jen, thank you so much for being here. We hope you enjoyed this episode of It's Another VO Podcast. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. You can also email us your questions to anothervopodcast at gmail.com or follow us on Instagram at anothervopodcast. See you next time.